Welcome to Polk Today. I'm your host, Brian Lacey, and today is Wednesday, October 15th, 2014. We'll start off today's show with a visit from the Small Business Assistance Center. Small businesses are the backbone of the U.S. economy and the primary source of jobs for Americans. Locally, the Polk County Small Business Assistance Center provides accessible, affordable, and professional consultation, entrepreneurial training, and resources to small startup and mature businesses throughout Polk County. Dawn DeCaminato with the SBAC has the details on social media and connecting with your customers. Hi, I'm Don DiCaminata with Polk County Small Business Assistance Center. At the SBAC, we help Polk County business owners start or grow an existing business in a variety of ways. When it comes to social media, Facebook has become one of the number one ways a company can inexpensively connect to their customers. Here are a few tips you should remember when creating your Facebook page. Keep your posts interactive. Add a video or a picture and help your message stand out. Keep your customers engaged by making your Facebook page a place they go to see what's new and for special offers or discounts. Stay relevant. Talk about what's trending in your area or industry and ask your fan base for feedback. Pay attention to the performance of your post under Page Insights. From there, you can determine when your fans are online and schedule your posts accordingly. Remember, the Polk County Small Business Assistance Center is funded through the County Business Tax License and is here to help small business owners succeed. For more information about the Polk County Small Business Assistance Center, you can visit them on the web at cfdc.org backslash SBAC or give them a call at 863-534-5915. Polk County Elderly Services is committed to the needs of the age 60 plus and disabled adults within the community. They provide case management to eligible individuals, frail and elderly by tending to physical, medical, environmental, social and mental conditions. Hope Jones has the details on a program of a partnership between elderly services and the SPCA that keeps seniors and their pets fed. Here we are at Polk County Elderly Services where we're going to learn more about a unique partnership between Polk County Elderly Services and the Polk County SPCA. Research showing that people will um, give up their own food to feed their pet is something that is known and the SPCA approached us about this meals program because we're able to do the deliveries to the clients so we maintain a, a roster of clients and their pets and the type of food that they need and the SPCA delivers it to us and then we get it out to the clients and it is fantastic and it is strictly the meals clients that are that participate in this program because those visits are either made to their homes when we deliver the meals or they're coming into the meal sites. And the, uh, that assures that the pet is getting the nutrition that it needs and the client isn't cutting him or herself short of their nutritional needs. It's a wonderful program. And studies have shown that pets help reduce blood pressure and um, they they very often can give a person a reason to live. We've seen that where people actually state, you know, I, the reason I'm still here is so that I can take care of my pet. And when he's gone, I'll be okay. We have about 40 clients in the pet food program. And when someone disenrolls, then we replace them with someone else. Is there a waiting list for that? Or? We are fortunate we don't really have to have a waiting list. But the, it just seems to work out pretty well that way that we... Uh, that we lose one and gain one. Staying on top of the events here at Polk today includes a look at the weather for the latest forecast conditions and a look at what's happening in the tropics. We take you to the Emergency Operations Center with EOC Coordinator Billy Abernathy. Hey, Billy. Thanks, Brian. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Bill Abernathy, Polk County Emergency Management from the Emergency Operations Center. And this is your weather brief for Wednesday, October 15th, 2014. 
Today we can expect a high of 88, low tonight of 63, humidity of 97%, with a 40% chance of isolated to scattered thunderstorms, generally before 2 p.m. Keep in mind that the thunder thunderstorms that do develop will produce frequent lightning and heavy rainfall ahead of this cold front. For Thursday, we can expect mostly sunny skies with a high of 83, low of 60, winds will be from the west, northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And for Friday, we can expect sunny skies, high of 82, low of 60, winds will be from the north at 6 miles per hour. Weekend, uh, for the weekend projection, these, we will have sunny skies, uh, high temperatures in the mid 80s and lows in the night of uh, each night of Saturday and Sunday of around 60 to 62 degrees. And now to the allergy report. Today's predominant pollens are at, still at a medium high uh, for ragweed, elm, and grasses. Uh, Thursday's pollen will be falling to a moderate level due to the decrease in part uh, by the lack of stronger winds to uh, push the pollens around. And now to the tropics. Currently, emergency managers are monitoring two areas in the Atlantic. The first area, identified with a yellow circle, is Hurricane Gonzala in the western Atlantic. Uh, Gonzala is moving to the northwest at 13 miles per hour. A gradual turn to the north and then eventually to the northeast is anticipated uh, by late Thursday. Maximum sustained winds at Gonzala is at 125 miles an hour, which is a category three. Hurricane force winds extend outward to 25 miles from the center, and mineral central, minimal central millibars are at 954. The second area is a broad area of low pressure in the central Atlantic, identified with the white circle. This system continues to produce disorganized shower activity Significant development is not anticipated for this system as it starts moving to the north eventually uh, over the next day or two. In 48 hours, it's at 10% of development, and in five days, at 20% development. I'm Bill Abernathy, Polk County Emergency Management from the Emergency Operations Center, and I'll see you back here tomorrow on PGTV. Have a good day. Back to you, Brian. Thanks, Billy. PGTV is Polk County's Government Access Cable TV channel. Our programming allows residents easier access to county government meetings and local programming. One such program is Polk Place. Polk Place offers government entities and nonprofit organizations the opportunity to get their message out and or promote upcoming activities. Now, one of the signature events for Polk County Parks and Rec is the Haunted Halloween Hayride and Happenings. It's scheduled for this Saturday from 5 to 10 p.m. Make sure you check it out. Each year, you guys put on this Halloween Hayride and Happenings. It seems like every year it gets a little bit bigger. That is, the goal. <laughs> that is the goal to like enhance it. You know, we want a lot of repeat customers, so you got to tweak it every every year, a little, little twist. Now, tell us a little bit about uh, what makes this event so special. Well, I think the big draw is that it really is family friendly. We try to do things that cater to, you know, toddlers and small children up through you know, maybe just keeping hold of the preteens and those teens who want the scary side of Halloween. Right. So we try to do the whole spectrum. Now, we're going to talk in depth a little bit about what people can expect, mm -hmm. but it's a huge thing. And, and obviously, with a huge thing like this, um, you've got to have lots of volunteers, lots of partnerships that are helping to pay for it. Exactly. Um, because, well, let's face it, the county just doesn't have that kind of funds in their coffers. They don't. Uh, we are very fortunate to have a lot of repeat uh, sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, we've got Atkins, Catrali Citrus Deuces, and Papa John's, who are at least three, if not four years, running sponsors who donate everything from money to allow us to buy things to right. sponsorships that allow us, you know, word of mouth. We put our flyers on pizza boxes, so we really try to use what they're giving us to the best of our ability to kind of supplement that county budget, yes. Yeah. Um, but as far as the volunteers go, that is a whole nother almost event in itself, which we are very fortunate that Amy's been working diligently on. Yes, so we're looking for over 300 volunteers. We have 300 wow. positions to fill. Yes. So if you're looking to serve your community, this is an excellent opportunity for you. 
Um, volunteers age 14 or older are allowed to volunteer and um, you can just sign up by emailing me and we have positions from um, from carnival game attendants to stage hands to hayride actors if you're really into that yeah. Halloween spirit so we've got a little something for everyone well that's one of the things that's always impressive about you guys is you've got your volunteer stuff down mm -hmm. you know I've been to a lot of events where I volunteer for other places and and sometimes they can be quite the fiasco for volunteers just standing around wondering what you need to exactly. do or they've got you running here running there and nobody knows what's going on but you guys have a real plan for the volunteers, don't you? That's always the goal. I mean, uh, Amy's kind of our front of house person. She'll be checking you in. And then we've got everything from instruction cards to place markers on the field. Because once it starts, there's only, what, 10 of us in Parks and Rec and mm -hmm. 300 of you yeah. guys volunteering. So we can't afford to be everywhere. So. Amy has her hands full with that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and of course, uh, you guys are kind of sporting yes. these nice shirts here. <laughs> Doing a little publicity. <laughs> um, these are last year's shirts. We're kind of tweaking the idea and we'll have new shirts, but every volunteer that comes, we try to provide them with a shirt while supplies last and then a, a small dinner because you are going to be there for five yeah. plus hours. So. <laughs> Hey, that's going to do it for today's show. As a reminder to keep current with programs of progress in the county, it's as simple as visiting us online at polk-county.net or following us on Facebook and or Twitter or even checking out the Polk County YouTube channel. I invite you to join us Thursday for an update from Keep Polk County Beautiful and uh, we'll get a visit from Jane Waters Thomas and an art update. For Polk Today, I'm Brian Lacey and we'll see you tomorrow.